Electricast. Last week on Ghost Hampton, Georgie and Berto have a cat and mouse talk outside his office. She gives Berto her card with blood from her pricked finger. Sergeant Frank sees to Lyle after the two deaths on his porch. Mateo agrees to come help Lyle. Noah tells Lyle Georgie will be mad. She arrives, gets the facts from Sergeant Frank, then literally disowns Lyle for causing such trouble. Exterior, Lyle's house, later that morning. Parked at the curb under Lyle's big tree, Father Matteo Sherry steps out of the parish's black sedan. He borrowed it in haste. Now he takes in the scene. Police cars are plenty, a billowing blue top over Lyle's porch, and a population of uniformed police and plainclothes detectives. Some campers, calling themselves believers, have trickled back to the neighborhood. Their mood has turned dark. Matteo moves toward the house as a swaying branch above delivers a few wads of wet toilet paper at his feet. Out onto the porch emerges Lyle Hall looking exhausted, emotionally drained and, quite unusual for him, defeated. He nods to Sergeant Frank who looks at him curiously. Lyle totes a paper shopping bag from Citarella, the Italian specialty foods purveyor of lasagnas Georgie would buy for him. Frank notes that the bag is too heavy for just meds and underwear. Got enough there for all of us? My, my meds, Frank. Frank picks up on how unlike the typical Lyle this is. Monosyllabic, defensive, not sarcastic. Your dumbbells too? Yeah, that's it. Dumbbells. Lyle takes the steps to his front porch unsteadily and a little too fast. The pathway's old slates have always been uneven. Now the heel of Lyle's loafer catches the corner of a slate and he stumbles forward. Father Matteo catches Lyle by his elbows and steadies him on his feet. Thanks for being here. Of course. You are a friend in need. You have been through a lot. What can I do to help? (sighs) Can I have an exorcism? No, Lila, that I cannot do. Even if I could, I'd have to go through channels all the way to the Vatican. How about an emergency? Doctors can perform emergency surgery. It pains me to see you like this, Lila. Well, how about a drink? What drink? Scotch. Lila... It is only mid-morning. That doesn't count when you've been up for days. Matteo nods to Big Frank, observing from the porch. Lyle, don't forget. You're not supposed to leave town. Lyle gives Frank an I know, I know wave, and he and the priest move to the parked black sedan. How about that diner you like in Southampton? You need nourishment. Interior. Mateo's parish sedan, a moment later. Seated in Mateo's car, the shopping bag is on the passenger floor between Lyle's feet. It has shirts and underwear, some toiletries, and some plastic bottles of prescription drugs. As Mateo puts the car in gear, the bag falls over. There's something heavier than underwear. Thanks for doing this. No problem. You pack the bag? Can't stay in my house. I understand. Where will you stay? Uh, Worst comes to worst, Montauk. Oh, I cannot drive all that way. Lyle squints at Matteo. I borrowed the parish car without asking. It was an emergency. Observing how Matteo drives, something odd strikes Lyle. Matteo, do you have a driver's license uh, here in New York? Not exactly, Lyle. Lyle gives in to the moment. Okay. Let's go full Thelma and Louise. Matteo makes a quizzical face and barrels down Montauk Highway back to Southampton. Exterior, Lyle's front porch, continuous. Sergeant Frank exits Lyle's house and steps down to the front yard. 
his dog Georgie. Yeah. Your dad took off with. You mean Lyle? His dad phase is over. Right. He's left the building with his priest friend. How nice. Yeah. So Lyle has a pistol, huh? Didn't you once say he kept it in his nightstand? He did. You're not saying. I checked both nightstands. Good God, Frank. What could he possibly want with that? Not gonna hypothesize. Want me to have him tailed? Oh my God. No, no tail. I know he has a permit. Okay, well, his friend from Malta, the priest, doesn't have a driver's license. Ugh. Just saying. Interior, Princess Diner, Southampton, 20 minutes later. Back in Southampton, Lyle and Matteo face each other across a Formica tabletop in a booth. There are Greek-themed paper placemats before them. Lyle's phone keeps buzzing, and he silences it. Someone wants you. Yeah, Silk. That woman on TV. You were, we thought, smitten with a much younger Jezebel. She pursues you? You don't beat around the bush. Americans have no time to beat the bush. Lila, what can I do to help you? A thing I can really do. Lyle thinks about this as his hamburger platter arrives, along with Mateo's coffee, eggs, and toast. Lyle also gets a rocks glass of scotch. Instead of answering Mateo's question, Lyle raises his glass. Maybe that drink will help you get some sleep. No rest for the wicked. Now a snifter appears in front of Mateo. Got that for you. It's cognac, made from wine or champagne. Don't order either in a diner. No, it's still morning, Lyle. Come on, Father. Live a little. The sun's over the yard arm. One cognac never killed anybody. Lyle raises his glass to clink, and Matteo gingerly takes a sip and shivers. Down the hatch. Lyle digs into his burger. Your friend from TV, I mean the portly one, died tragically. It is so sad, and I offer prayers for the repose of her soul. Thanks. Then there's old Glenn Stanley. He's dead too. Yes. What happened to him? Dunno. But it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Matteo watches Lyle eat and drink for a moment and cautiously sips his cognac. You know one unexpected pleasure? of coming to Long Island and serving in this parish for the summer. Your many idioms. You people do not use the proper English wording if you instead have a turn of phrase handy. Slang? Yes. I think the slangs tell much about the people using them. One thing is that Americans are so busy, slang makes communicating easier. And your... Idioms can reveal emotion, too. When all else fails, there's always cursing like a sailor. Good and bad. For instance, if you have enough to drink, you are good. Am I correct? If you need a drink, you are bad. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much, Father. I like how you have both... Angel food, cake, and devil food. Like the cartoon of the angel on your right shoulder and the devil on your left. The eternal battle of good versus evil in microcosm. That's me, all right. And small potatoes. Long Island was once a big potato farming economy. Yeah. My old company bought up farmland and flipped it to developers who built McMansions, putting an end to local potatoes. McMansions? The fast food version of building a big house or many in assembly line fashion, then selling them. You don't sound proud of your work. Not a lot to be proud of at this point. You know I have a daughter. Of course, 
the policewoman. Yeah. Well, on top of everything else, she came to my house this morning to disown me. An American child can disown the parent? In Malta, the parent can disown the child? I know. Uh, symbolic, I guess. It means she wants nothing to do with me. Maybe she'll relent and return to you. How about never, if I know her? A fresh scotch delivered. Lyle leans close to Matea. When I had my talk with Jewel, she showed me my wife's tombstone, with Georgie's name added to it. Matteo frowns with deep concern. Under her name, it says Georgie dies in about two days. Oh, my Lord. How could that be? I'm terrified Georgie will die in a gunfight, and I got her that job. You suffer guilt for something that may not happen. But what did Jewel want from you? I think she wanted you, Matteo. Wanted you in that damned house, setting the captive spirits free. Oh, you could not have known that. I didn't. I was a useful idiot. Matteo drinks more of his cognac. Do you think I am possessed? The priest considers this. Not answering me is answering me. Anything is possible. In Old Vic, you were on the floor as I once was as a boy, having a paroxysm. Whatever that is. I tried to bring you around. Ah, that's when I shouted, Fuck you, priest! Hearing harsh language, the diner's manager and the waitress both look over. There was something else, Lyle. Something worse. Lyle makes a quizzical expression. You said, We know you killed your mother. Lyle, sipping his scotch, almost spits it. (coughs) Most disturbing in that statement is the we, plural, suggesting a group of unknown entities. Killed your mother? Killed your mother? That couldn't possibly be true, could it? It could be, in that my mother went down in the catacombs where I was having a seizure. I had epilepsy as a boy. My two friends brought her in to help me. The village doctor was away. Mother brought a neighbor with her. The witch of Gozo. Lyle slugs his scotch. Holy shit! Oops, uh, sorry, father. What the hell is a Gozo? My home. An island off Malta. A very spiritual place. And you had your own witch? So they say. That woman, Yasmin, determined I was possessed by something dwelling in those catacombs. She tried to drive it out. Neighborly of her. When I awoke, mother was dead on the catacomb floor next to me. Yasmin and my friends, too, said a demonic entity left me and jumped to my mother. The shock killed her. Holy shit. I was 14, and my father held me responsible for mother's death. Who knows? He could be right. He sent me away. The monastery school, which is right there on Gozo. How'd that go? Well, I eventually became a priest, but my father never forgave me. Afraid mother was taken to hell, he charged me with offering a mass every day for her soul. My two friends, as boys, continued exploring those caves. What the hell kept you boys going back down there? Uh, Rumors of hidden treasure. It is Malta, after all. So what about possession? You experienced it. What was it like? I was unconscious. My friends thought I had a epileptic seizure. In my case, I felt trapped by something inside my body. Bugs like fire ants were burning under my skin. I was screaming for you. Sorry, I was busy. You want my assessment? There's something 
Very bad in that house, Old Vic. Perhaps keeping old souls imprisoned there. I experienced them in an upstairs room. The entity didn't like you. Once you brought me in, it really didn't like you. <laughs> I noticed. But I think you are affected by the entity only when inside the house. <sighs> so I don't carry that thing around with me? Probably not. One thing I believe, the entity's locus is in the old barn, not the house. Locus? Where it did its worst, where its power lies. The TV said Save a Barn will renovate that barn? Yeah. That is a problem, Lyle. You know demons. In service to... The big guy downstairs. Yes. Predators prey on the weak, the old, infirm, the fearful... Like me? I cast no aspersions. Such entities prey on children, too. Immature, unformed belief systems prone to believing in the occult. Matteo looks long at Lyle. That barn is a perfect place to bring in young, impressionable children. You said you saw a vision in that barn? A bloody kitchen knife? Yeah. That was a warning. The hand you saw wielding the big knife was... A child's hand, Matteo. So, the old barn is perfect. And perfect is bad. Electric acid.